Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Mont Saint Michel floats like a mirage on the horizon. Each year, more than three million pilgrims and tourists float to this World Heritage listed site. Mont Saint Michel, magical wonder of the Western world. Continue watching to find out more. Bonjour, that's good day in French. Delightful viewers, I am Gibon the Seagull from the Argelsis of Normandy, and I'm vegan for the planet. The hospitable seagulls of France cherish your noble friendship, and we wish you and your loved ones an abundance of happiness. In today's program, we are delighted to introduce a magnificent sight from our home, Mont Saint-Michel, magical wonder of the Western world. Our home in the region of Normandy is a gentle place dotted with lush meadows and farmlands. As we fly high across the sky, the legacy of the Normans is evident everywhere, with striking sights such as the cathedrals of Rouen and Coutances, the Bayeux Museum, which houses the thousand-year-old embroidery of the Bayeux Tapestry, and one of the seagulls' favorite, the magnificent Mont Saint-Michel. Situated in the middle of the bay, less than half a mile off the northwestern coast of Normandy, Mont Saint-Michel seemingly floats like a mirage on the horizon. A tidal island and commune that houses a magnificent centuries-old abbey accompanied by a small village, Mont Saint-Michel and the bay that surrounds it is a spectacular sight indeed. Each year, more than 3 million pilgrims and tourists flock to this World Heritage Site, recognized by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO, for its natural beauty, architectural splendor, and cultural significance. Mont Saint-Michel was originally established as Montombe by an Irish hermit in the 5th century. The abbey that has given this island its fame is said to have originated in the 7th century. According to legend, in 708, Saint Michael the Archangel appeared before Saint Aubert, Bishop of Avranches, and instructed him to build a church sanctuary in his name at the top of the island. The bishop initially ignored this request, thinking it was just a dream, so the archangel appeared again to repeat the instruction. Saint Aubert thought it would be impossible to build a church atop such a wild and rocky terrain and on an isolated mound surrounded by the sea at that, so he ignored the message yet again. The archangel then burned a hole in Saint Aubert's forehead with his finger to convince the bishop that his visions were indeed real. Finally, realizing that he had received divine instructions, Saint Aubert built the church in Saint Michael's the archangel's honor, and it was consecrated on October 16, 709. During the construction of the church, the bishop of Avranches sent to religious luminaries to look for the relics of Saint Michael. They brought back a piece of marble on which the archangel had placed his foot, as well as a section of wall and a red cape. These relics, 
together with Aristotle's translated text, continue to attract many spiritual visitors to the Mont Saint-Michel Abbey. In 966, a community of Benedictine monks settled there at the request of the Duke of Normandy. Over the years, the Mont Saint-Michel Abbey became a place of prayer, worship, and pilgrimage. It has undergone many transformations to become the masterpiece of medieval and Gothic architecture that we see today. Stretching across 247 acres of rocky terrain at the top of the mount, it rises some 78 meters or 256 feet out of Mont Saint-Michel Bay and offers a splendid view of the entire bay. Particularly, the medieval walls on the southern and eastern sides of the mount offer panoramic views. It certainly is a wonderful place to perch for us birds. The Mont Saint-Michel Abbey can be divided into two areas the church and the merveille, the monk's living area. The abbey church is the centerpiece of the abbey and was built over three crypts. The architecture is mostly 11th century Romanesque with round arches and small windows. The Gothic pointed arches and bigger windows behind the altar fill the sanctuary with light. The unique exterior walls of the Gothic monastery combines the strong characteristics of a fortress and the simplicity of a sacred building. The Merveille consists of three stories. At the very top is one of the most incredible sections of Mont Saint-Michel Abbey, the cloister. With its foundations on the vaults of the scriptorium, this peaceful enclosed garden was designed purely as a spiritual area for monks to pray, meditate, and contemplate on the Word of God. Meanwhile, vegetables and medicinal herbs flourish in the serene space. From the cloister, one can go to the refectory. With high, narrow windows and no decorations, the refectory is a quiet place where the monks eat their meals in silence save for the reading of scriptures. Below the cloister is the scriptorium, known as the Hall of Knights. Through medieval times, the abbey became a famous center of learning, drawing the attention of some of the greatest manuscript illuminators in Europe. In the 19th century, the tower and spire of the abbey were added, crowned by a gilded statue of St. Michael. We'll be right back after sharing a little morsel of food with the kind tourist. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Mont Saint-Michel magical wonder of the Western world. Did you know that Mont Saint-Michel has a smaller English counterpart in Cornwall, England, called St. Michael's Mount? I'm sure some of my relatives, the English seagulls, must live there. Back here in Normandy, the wildlife of Mont Saint-Michel is made up mainly of birds. The most commonly seen species are seagulls like me and sea swallows. The bay also provides a perfect sanctuary for migratory birds, especially the anatidae that spend the winter months here with us. Ducks, notably mallards and rarer varieties such as the sheldrakes of Bellon, nest about the polder dams, herons, pink flamingos, and more rarely, a white swan, have been spotted here. Mont Saint-Michel has also been home to a village for more than a millennia, 
as the Mont Saint-Michel Abbey continued to develop, a village grew around it. Some of the buildings, hotels, museums, and tourist boutiques, which lined the narrow street of the famous La Grande Rue, which winds its way up through the abbey, date back to the 15th century. The people who live on Mont Saint-Michel are called Montois. Halfway up the Grande Rue is the parish chapel committed to Saint Peter. It was originally the church of the 11th century Montois and was rebuilt in the 15th to 16th centuries. It houses some exquisite religious objects such as the 15th century stained glass, an altar and altarpiece dated 1660, a 13th century baptismal font, sculptures of the Virgin and Child, as well as the dedication of the Virgin and a copy of the St. Michael statue. Apart from its historic structures, one of my favorite things about Mont Saint-Michel is its gorgeous Norman landscapes and wondrous bay. Mont Saint-Michel has the highest tides in Europe. With a range of 10 meters, it transforms the landscape twice daily. At low tide, the bay turns into a mud flat that stretches from Normandy to Brittany. During high tide, Mont Saint-Michel becomes an island. Three small coastal rivers, the Célune, the Quénon, and the Sé, flow into the bay, changing course according to the tide. At times, land, sea, and sky dissolve together into a uniform gray haze. Many initiatives have been taken to preserve Mont Saint-Michel and its culturally significant buildings. In 1836, Victor Hugo, an influential figure and ardent lover of Mont Saint-Michel Abbey, launched a campaign to restore this architectural treasure, which was in much need of repair. Subsequently, the Mont Saint-Michel Abbey was declared a French historic monument in 1874. In 1879, a raised causeway was built that connects the island to land and prevents erosion from the tide, also making access easier for pilgrims from the mainland. Further improvements were announced in June 2006 with a 164 million euro project to build a hydraulic dam and bridge using the waters of the Quénon River to push sediment away from Mont Saint-Michel and allow the waters to flow freely around the island. The new bridge, designed by architect Dietmar Feistinger, was opened to the public on July 22, 2014. Since June 24, 2001, a community of four monks and seven nuns from the monastic fraternities of Jerusalem have been living on Mont Saint-Michel. They are not involved in the management of the Abbey, but are tenants of the Center for National Monuments. Their life revolves around work, prayer, and fraternal life, meeting four times a day. Many pilgrims and visitors join them in the various liturgical celebrations and singing the glory of God. Like a fortress that rises out of granite rock in the midst of the Norman waters, Mont Saint-Michel is certainly one of France's most distinguished landmarks, a spectacular emblem of faith and a wondrous example of God's miraculous creations. For more information on Mont Saint-Michel, please visit ot-montsaintmichel.com. Gracious viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company today. May your days be filled 
with absolute bliss in God's benevolent embrace. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WAU. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WAU. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com bar inclinada WAU. Programa de nuestra ofrece multe lingui. Vă puteți uita pe suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule și suprememastertv.com bar oblique WAU. 